David Kravitz. We are happy to present you with a, another FJMC, Federation Jewish Men's Club Sports Webinar. Um, the Federation Jewish Men's Club is the parent organization of over 200 conservative men's clubs around the world. FJMC has presented more than 100 webinars since the pandemic began. And if you were on a few minutes ago, you heard about uh, that I have 23 sports slash cooking ones that we're uh, uploading onto our YouTube channel. So we work very hard to provide value to our members and to the Jewish community in general. So what, one thing I'd like to, uh, before we introduce our guests, I'd like to give special, special kudos and a large yeshikoa to my partner, David Kravitz, because he's done a fabulous, fabulous chart. He's retired, so you know, he has time. And uh, he has recru he's recruited Eric as monks uh, and, and many other guys that we have. Uh, so I'm gonna have David take it away from here. Okay, thank you, Danny. So as a friend of mine would say, we got a good one for you tonight. I, and if you watch TV, you'll know what I, what I just said. Okay, our guest speaker is Eric Holtz. Eric attended Dean College where he played baseball for two years. He was a Team USA head coach for the gold medal winning under 18 Dan, Danny, baseball uh, team. At the uh, David, David, team. David, Sorry. yeah. Can we just pause for a second before Absolutely, we introduce Eric? Absolutely. I, I apologize. Okay, that's uh, all right, fine. Can I introduce you? No, I don't need an introduction. Okay. Uh, I played second base for the Niles West High School Indians, when you can still use the term Indians, uh, and I played with Bay, alongside Babe Ruth. Is that okay? Um, but all kidding aside, today uh, a number of people I've, I've spoken with in the last several hours uh, is a day that you know we saw some unprecedented history take place in the United States with the breaching of the U.S. Capitol, uh, and I thought it would just be appropriate for a moment before we begin sure. uh, this this program to spend a moment just in thought about what took place today and, and a little bit in prayer for, you know, for all of us. Because I think it, no matter where you are in the political spectrum today, shook a lot of us up. Um, you know, in our Jewish tradition, in Leviticus 19, colon 15, uh, it is written, you shall not render an unfair decision. Uh, and then in something that we studied in our Talmud class as part of the FJMC, in Berchot 55a, it is written, a ruler is not to be appointed unless the community is first consulted. And what we're going through today is the consulting of, you know, in the United States is really consult the consulting of the community. Uh, so what I'd like to do is just for a moment is to go to, you know, go to our, our prayer book and just, just to put everybody's mind at ease and to go to our tradition and, and, and just to read a, a, a combination of a couple of prayers, short. Um, Shelter us in the shadow of your wings for you, O oh God, watch over and deliver us. And you, God, are sovereign, merciful, and compassionate. Ensure our going and our coming for life and peace now and forever. May you spread over us your canopy of peace, Brukhatar Nai, who spreads the canopy of peace over us, over all his people, over the people of Israel, and over Jerusalem. And may we always try to be what we're, what we're, what we're commanded to be, and that's to, be, that's to, to take peace and to be peaceful in what we do. And again, shalom is the most important word we have in Judaism. And may, you know, what we saw today is an aberration and, and may we move forward in a time of, of peace and a time of shalom for all mankind. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Okay, so um, we're gonna go back to this, no problem. So as, as I said, we have a good one for you tonight. Our guest speaker is Eric Holtz. Eric attended Dean College where he played baseball for two years. He was a Team USA head coach for the gold medal winning under 18 baseball team of the 2017 Maccabee Games. He was named the baseball coach of the Israel National Baseball Team. The Israel Association of Baseball named Eric as the manager for the 2020 Olympic qualifiers. The team played the 2019 European Baseball Championship B pool. They won all five of the games, advancing to the playoffs against Team Lithuania and the 2019 playoff series. At the end of July, 2019, they, qual they had the last qualifying spot for the 2019 European Baseball Championships. In September, 2019, 
He manages Team Israel to a fourth place finish the 2019 European Baseball Championship in Germany. He also managed the team at the Africa Europe 2020 Olympic qualification tournament in Italy in September 2019, which Israel won to qualify to play baseball at the 2020 Summer Olympics in, in Tokyo. Um, and the Olympics were postponed until July of 2021. So it is now my pleasure, without further ado, to introduce to you, Eric Holtz. Before Eric, wait, one more. I'm sorry also oh. to interrupt. This is really important, guys, though. Eric is going to speak. If you have any questions, please, please, please put them in the chat and I will filter him to him appropriately, probably after his presentation. But please don't interrupt Eric. Please put your questions and he welcomes all comments and questions into the chat and we'll manage it accordingly. Thank you very much, Eric, Eric it's all yours. Eric, take it away. All right, gentlemen, thank you for having me. First and foremost, it's a pleasure to, to spend some time uh, as Tom alluded to, you know, especially in, a, in a, a day like we had today, maybe we can uh, just change courses for a second and talk a little bit about something incredibly positive and uh, have some fun doing this. So at the end, I will answer anything and everything I can for you, but I'm going to kind of walk backwards and kind of take you through this incredible journey that, uh, that we've been through. Uh, this journey for me with Israel... Um, I'm born and raised in the Bronx. Uh, my dad actually uh, got to see uh, Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig play, um, instilled the love of baseball in me. And, and, and unfortunately, my dad passed away when I was 11 years old. And, and um, baseball was my, my first love. Um, and um, as David alluded to, I played uh, a couple of years in college. I had a pretty negative experience there. And it wasn't until about 17 or 18 years later uh, that I picked up a baseball again competitively, which is, uh, you know, kind of a crazy story. Here I am at 36 years old. I hadn't played baseball in probably 17, 18 years. Um, I'm, I'm sure a bunch of you guys have heard of fantasy camp where, where, you know, for, for a few dollars, you can go down. And for me, it was be a, a New York Yankee for a week. Uh, David, they have Red Sox fantasy camp. Um, but uh, for me, I started playing baseball again. And um, after an 18 year layoff, I was still pretty good. Uh, so I went down there and, and, and played well. And, and I went back. And then all of a sudden, my, it, it was kind of like a phoenix. I was reborn, and here I am at 38, 39 years old, and I'm playing in all these men's leagues, and a buddy of mine says, hey, I saw they're having a tryout for a professional baseball league in Israel. I said, Glenn, what, what are you talking about? There is no professional baseball in Israel. He goes, no, but I'm telling you, they're going to have one. So here I am now at 40 years old, David, another guy you might remember pretty well, a guy named Dan Duquette. Uh, Dan Duquette was, the, was out of baseball at the time, and uh, Dan owns a facility up in Hinsdale, Massachusetts, and Dan was the head of player development for a league called the Israel Baseball League. And uh, my buddy Glenn talks me into going up to, to Massachusetts for a day and basically, you know, having a tryout in this professional league for, to, to go to Israel. I'm, I'm literally 40 years old at the time. I'm married with uh, three young kids. Um, I, I, I worked in, in, in business and, and I was coaching college baseball. Uh, and I go up there really truly thinking I'm just gonna have a, a, a fun day and, and, and I'm gonna enjoy myself and, and, and just have fun. And uh, like any other tryout, they take you through the entire thing um, where you're running a 60 yard dash and, and, and you're taking ground balls at short and, and, and fly balls in the outfield. And then it's time for BP. And I'm hitting the ball pretty well. Um, and then they do what's called the controlled scrimmage. And uh, a kid that literally, I probably had socks older than. This kid couldn't have been more than 18 years old is on the mound. I'm in the batter's box. Dan Duquette and a couple of scouts from the Cubs and the Cardinals are standing behind the turtle. 
And I look at the first pitch fastball right down the middle, strike one. I said, all right, this kid's okay. I get ready. I lock in. Second pitch is a curveball, strike two. I'm sitting 0-2 against a kid literally maybe 18, 19 years old. I step out of the batter's box. I look at the umpire and I go, 0-2, huh? He goes, yes, sir. I go, that's great. I got him right where I want him. <laughs> he throws a fastball in on my hands thinking he was going to beat the old guy. And I just turned on this fastball and absolutely demolished it. And I get to first base. I hit a, a single through the, uh, the left side of the infield. And the guy's not paying attention to me. Still second base. And I see the guys behind the turtle kind of like whispering to themselves, probably something along the lines of, who does this guy think he is? So the day's over. I spent probably seven, eight hours there. I have a great time. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I, I walk over to Dan and I walk over to the scouts and I go, gents, really, I, I just want to say thank you for this. What a great time. Had a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Take care of yourselves. And they go, excuse me, come back here. They go, are you really serious about this? I said, why? Are you offering me a contract? They go, well, are you serious about it? I said, have your people contact my people, just being a wise guy. I get in the car, I'm driving home, and I call my wife. Now, I'm married 30 years, and, and my wife and I have known each other a lot longer than that. And, and I call her up, I go, babe, Pack your bags. We're moving to Tel Aviv. And she goes, are you out of your effing mind? <laughs> what happened? So I said, I had a great day. It was a lot of fun. And, 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 and that's it. Six months later, I get a contract in the, in uh, an emailed contract that they uh, basically signed me to be a player coach in the one and only is one and only time Israel baseball league. So in 2007, I got to go spend 10 weeks in Israel. Um, I got to see this most glorious, historical, cultural, warm country and spent 10 weeks there. It wasn't like I was a tourist. I really fell in love with this country. And, and man, was it, 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 it was amazing. It was just amazing. Everything about it. In addition to... Um, my head coach was Ron Bloomberg. A couple of you guys might have heard of him, the first DH in baseball. Well, Ron was there for three days and left. If you know Ron, it wouldn't surprise you, but Ron committed to doing it and then he left. So Eric Holtz is now uh, given the task of running the team, playing for the team, and you know, just kind of doing the day-to-day -day stuff. Wow. From wire to wire, we are in first place and we win the championship. And, and um, this was my first taste of Israel. This was really where I got to meet a lot of the great people um, who obviously I'm still in touch with today, but um, that was in 2007. So I spent about 10 weeks in Israel in 2007. In 2012, my, uh, a buddy of mine who I had played uh, baseball against, but I was his roommate, uh, in 2007, asked me if I would like to join him in in going back to Israel for the Maccabi. And if you guys don't know what the Maccabi is, it's basically the Jewish Olympics every four years. It's in Israel. Uh, so in 2013, I got to go back as the assistant coach uh, of Team USA, and we won the gold medal. As soon as um, the Maccabi was over, um, the gentleman that ran uh, Maccabi Baseball uh, asked me right then and there if I would consider coming back four years later and taking over as the head coach of uh, Team USA. I, I, I don't think I hesitated uh, more than about, you know, three seconds and said, I will absolutely do it. Um, I had the honor of leading the team in 2017. And not only did I, I get to do that, uh, I got to coach my youngest son who played first base and batted third and was the best hitter in, in the tournament there. And we'll talk about him later because he's going to make Aliyah 
uh, later this year so that he's going to also play for Israel at some point in his life. But I got back, I got to go back to Israel in 2017. Um, and it was at that point that um, there's a gentleman called Peter Kurz. And Peter Kurz uh, is born and raised in Manhattan and lived here probably for the first 25 or 27 years of his life, uh, made Aliyah, moved to Israel. And his dream was to build baseball in Israel, really to grow baseball in Israel. And I haven't met uh, that many more passionate baseball guys who don't live here. Um, and, and he approached me uh, probably in about 2016 when he found out I was coming back. Again, I had met him uh, nine years prior in the Israel Baseball League. And he asked me if I would uh, sit down with him and have breakfast in Manhattan uh, one morning. He wanted to talk to some things, uh, talk about some things with me. So I meet him in the city for breakfast and he shows up with like a, a, a like just a pad, you know, a line pad. And he says, here's the deal. I want you to lead the Israel national team. And our goal is the Olympics. And I looked at him and I said, oh, is that it? I mean, on a scratch pad with guys I had never heard of, kids in Israel. I mean, guys that were still in the army, it, it, kibbutzniks. I mean, we had a whole, I had no idea who these guys were. And they were scribbled down basically on a napkin at a breakfast in, in, in Manhattan. So I said to Peter, you know what, let me think about it for a little bit. I went home and I spoke to my wife and I said, babe, listen, I'm going to go back. I'm going to win another gold medal. And then I'm going to take over with Team Israel. And we're going to go to Serbia. And I want to see how we do. So long story short, we win the gold medal on a Tuesday. Team USA, I can show you there's my jersey and hat is still hanging in there. Team USA on a Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon, I changed my hat. I become the head head coach for Team Israel. Wow. So, so I literally now have four days to meet all these guys who were scratched down on this napkin in Manhattan a year prior. I got to figure out what what I have as far as a lineup, a pitching rotation, infield, outfield, catchers. I mean, wh what are these guys capable of? I got guys with ponytails. I got guys with afros. I, 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 I don't know what I'm doing with these guys. I have a coach who is, one is from the Czech Republic, coach in Israel. Turns out now he's one of my best friends and he's a dear guy. But the assistant coach for Israel is from the Czech Republic. You couldn't make some of this stuff up that I'm dealing with in Israel. Four days to put this team together, to go to Serbia, to compete in what's called the B pool. Okay, let me explain that real quick. There's an A pool, a B pool, and a C pool. Israel started out in the C pool. Uh, when I took over, we were in the B pool, and and Israel had never been higher than than the B pool. Um, our goal at the beginning of this, you know, obviously was the Olympics. None of us thought it was realistic. Uh, Peter said, "Man, if you could just get us to the A pool, that would be unbelievable." We get on a plane, we head to Serbia, and um, with a team that was not a lot better than some of the men's teams I still play on at 55 years old, we end up coming in second place in Serbia. We lost to Austria. We ran out of pitching and, and, and my catcher, uh, who was my four batter, uh, Torres oblique. And, and, and I ended up having to bat him ninth and he was bunting every time cause he couldn't swing. And it was a mess. It was just an absolute mess. But that being said, we came in second place. I mean, we were able to get the most out of 
the least, the most out of what we had and what we had just wasn't a whole lot at that time. So we fall in the championship to Austria. And one thing I didn't mention to you was I, I have three children. Uh, my youngest played for me for Team USA. My daughter, who is now a pediatric oncology nurse at Sloan Kettering, came as the team nurse for Team Israel to spend time with her father. And, and so I had my, my, my favorite and only daughter, who was a team nurse, with me in Serbia. We leave Serbia. We go back to Israel for two days before returning back to uh, the United States and back to New York. And we're hanging out on the beach together. And Peter calls me and says, hey, you can't leave the country. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I want a commitment now that you're going to stay on and do this. The guys loved you. I can't believe what you were able to get out of this team. Will you stay? There was no hesitation. I said, absolutely. Immediately, Peter and I, what we needed to do to get better. We needed more pitching. We needed more meat in the middle of the lineup. We needed guys. We, we saw what we competed against, but we knew we needed more. And the biggest challenge for us is, is you know, this is not the World Baseball Classic. Just having heritage here is not really good enough. You got to be a citizen of the country that you're representing. The coach does not have to be, but the, every player has to be a, a, a citizen of Israel. So Peter spends months and months with all the bureaucratic stuff uh, in Israel, figuring out what we need to do to be able to offer these guys First, we had to find guys. We had to find independent baseball guys. We scoured uh, college baseball. Uh, we scoured minor league baseball. We scoured um, ex-professional players who might still be interested in, in, in playing baseball and representing Israel. And then Peter went to the government, and we were able to figure out um, the process of making Aliyah a lot easier uh, for these guys to be able to get their, their citizenship. And, and what propelled us, I mean, you know, so, some things in life, it's just, you know, timing is, is, is incredible. Like when the moon and the stars align just perfectly. In 2017, Israel really set the world on fire in the World Baseball Classic, Right that really kind of put Israel on the map. And, and because you didn't have to be a citizen, a lot of these guys who had Jewish heritage, um, some of them you know, might not have even um, considered Judaism or Christian or any religion. They had Jewish heritage, they played for the World Baseball Classic. Half of that team, had such an incredible time representing and playing for Israel that they decided that they were going to make Aliyah and join us for the, the run to the Olympics. As improbable as it was, they were going to do it. So now all of a sudden we go from like a men's type team in Serbia, all of a sudden we're starting to get interest from all these minor league guys and ex ball players um, and, and we know that our first stop is going to be Bulgaria. And there are two pools at this point when we get to Bulgaria in 2019 and man, th th these pools were, these pools were good. Our pool was phenomenal. The pool in Lithuania was so, so our pool consisted of Bulgaria, Serbia, Greece, Ireland, and Russia. If I said to you guys, do you believe that Russia cheated? Would you believe me? Yep. <laughs> we get to Bulgaria 
I'll get to Russia in a minute. We get to Bulgaria, which is the most gorgeous green countryside I've ever seen. You know, we put the team together. We put the roster together. And again, on paper, man, this thing is, it, it, it's unbelievable compared to what I had. But again, that's on paper. We get to Bulgaria and I have 48 hours to basically see what I've got. I got to look at all my pictures. I got to see whose arm's in shape, who's a starter, who's a reliever, who can I use middle, middle relief long, who's going to be my closer here. What am I doing with the lineup? In Bulgaria, we had to play six games in a row, literally six days in a row. So like, you know, who am I going to throw early and then bring back and have to recycle? So in Bulgaria, I'm going to say we played like Bulgaria first and we beat them and we played Serbia second and we beat them. But we're, we're, we're paying attention to what the other teams are doing. And Russia is just crushing everybody. I mean, it's like, you know, like the Rocky movie, you know, his little Rocky and, and Russia was unreal. And, and with three and oh, Russia's three and oh, and we show up to play Russia. And I go, holy shit, you gotta be kidding me. Their entire infield was Cuban. Literally Cuban. Speaking Spanish, wait, these are Russian nationalists? There's no shot. I mean, there was no Russian, no English, all Spanish spoken the whole game. The umpiring in Bulgaria was as bad as any little league you've ever seen in your life. We're playing against Russia. They're beating us late in the game. It's like, Fourth three, we come back in the eighth inning and we tie it up. The game ends tied. And in the qualifiers, and now this is the B pool, and the qualifiers in the B pool called international tie break, where you have a runner on second base. Well, here they had a runner on first and second base with nobody out. Russia bunts. My pitcher fields it, throws to third. We got him. Russian umpire at third base calls him safe. I lose my stuff, man. I, I, I go crazy, but I, I, I go, listen, you know, I'm literally talking to myself going, you know what? If you get thrown out here, it's not going to do any good for the guys. I, I, control yourself. Control yourself. Russia goes out and scores four runs in the top of the 10. It's taken a lot of my strategy away now because I can't bunt, right? I, I first and second, nobody out. I mean, there's not a whole lot of thought process here. And, and we're leading off, I think, with like my eight batter. Well, my eight batter, singles. My nine batter gets hit by a pitch. We're down three with nobody out, and we just turned over the order. My leadoff batter with bases loaded, nobody out, hits a ball off the wall. We score two. We're down a run. My next batter comes up. Sing, uh, oh, no, 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 we're down a run. It's second and third. We're down a run. Doubled in, uh, uh, he doubled in two. We're down a run. They walk my number two, uh, Rob Paller, to get to a guy that's been playing pro ball for countless years with the Los Angeles Dodgers in uh, AAA. His name is Blake Galen. So they basically walk my two to get to the best hitter in the tournament. We're down a run, bases loaded, no outs. Blake hits an absolute missile up the middle. I'm not stopping the guy at second. I'm just waving him on because – you know, worst come to worst, they got to catch the ball, throw the ball, tag them, center field, the bobbles the ball. We walk off on Russia. We score five runs in the bottom of the 10 without recording it out. And if I have any Game of Thrones fans here, I don't know if I do or I don't. I get the guys 
on the field at the end of the game. And, and, you know, if you watch Game of Thrones, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But I look at the guys and I tell them how proud I am. And I go, and what do we say to the God of death? And the whole team at the same time screams, not today. Well, we took the set, the wind right out of the sails of Russia. The next day we beat Greece. The, the, the day after we beat um, Ireland. So now we're five and zero. Oh, Russia's four and one. We've got to play Russia again for the championship. Win or go home. Russia's beating us again in the eighth inning. Getting late, man. It's getting late, and and and. Not to make this too crazy, similar situation. We get a guy on, Simon Rosenbaum hits a two-run home run, and, 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 and we just absolutely uh, deflated Russia. Uh, we walked off on them. We won our bracket. Uh, David mentioned we then had to go to Lithuania. Uh, so, so, so here we are. We won our bracket. Lithuania wins their bracket. We don't know what to expect. And uh, we get to Lithuania, and I'm not going to bore you with this. We just destroyed them. In two games, we beat them a, a, a combined, I want to say it was like uh, 28 to 1 in two games. 15-1 like and 13 nothing, and, and, and that was it, done. Here's where the exciting stuff happens, guys. For the first time ever, Israel is out of the B pool. We're in the A pool. It's real baseball. It's big boy baseball. This is what we wanted we get to go to Germany, Germany, Israel, Jews are going to Germany to compete in Germany, the big bad Germans and everybody else. And here's little team Israel. And we can't believe it. I mean, we, 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 we're, we're riding high and, and, and we're all really, you know, uh, uh, believing in each other. There's no me, everybody's just a team player, whatever you need coach, whatever you need, skip, tell me what you, what we need to do. And we're going to do it. All right, so we lead off in Germany, and I, I, I'm going to tell you, we, we play the Czech Republic, uh, game one, we beat them. We play Sweden, game two, we beat them. We play Great Britain, game three, we beat them. We play, uh, I, I, I can't think right now, uh, in the fourth game, we beat them. We're 4-0. and Now, there are 12 teams in this thing, the top five teams – go to Italy for a chance to compete to get to the Olympics. Only five out of the 12. So I'm sitting here. I'm with the coaches. I go, guys, we're four and oh. We're guaranteed fifth place. We're guaranteed fifth place. Holy shit, we're guaranteed fifth place. We're like, what you're figuring this out. So the next day, we have Spain. Spain is coached by ex-New York Yankee, Luis Soho. And they absolutely crush us. I, I want to say the final score is like 16-9 and, 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 you know, tail between our legs to go back to the hotel. The next day we have the Netherlands, eighth in the world. The Netherlands are eighth in the world. Uh, the Netherlands beat us like 13-4. Still, I'm not feeling bad. Like, like I, I really think we can compete with these guys. The last game in Germany. Uh, no, no, oh, God. The, 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 I, I got to go backwards for a second. I'm sorry, guys. The fourth game that I couldn't remember was Germany. Here we are, Israel in Germany. The Jewish population. We're, we're walking around with blue and white in a land where nobody would have thought we could have ever been competing against the German team in Germany. Thousands of screaming German fans in the craziest atmosphere I've ever been involved in. Why? It's music blasting in the middle of the game. Every pitch, they're blasting like boom, 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 boom. The crowd's like raging and raving all game. We beat Germany four to three or four to two in Germany. I mean, this transcended baseball. This, 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 this was like 
my daughter and I just hugged in, 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 in tears thinking about the history of our people and, and, and how unbelievably big this was that we were given an opportunity to just be here. Never mind, we kicked their ass on their own soil. We were, we were given an opportunity to, to play baseball against this unbelievable national team who had a bunch of ex-pros, AAA guys, and we beat them. So now that made us 4-0. I apologize. That was like the biggest part of this whole thing for me. I mean, sitting, sit, standing on the third baseline, listening to Hatikva being played in Germany. I mean, think about what I'm saying right now. Hatikva blasting through speakers in Germany. Like, like chills. I, I, I get chills even thinking about being there two years ago. Then we lose to Spain. Then we lose to the Netherlands. But we knock Germany out. And, and the last game is Italy. And we're beating Italy. Italy comes back. And they walk off on us in the ninth inning. So here we are, man. We're four and three. We're limping into Italy. We're, we're, I mean, we start out four and zero, oh, and we're just limping into Italy. But here we are. Never mind. We got to the eight pole. We are now in Italy, in the Olympic qualifier. Again, remember, Peter said, Eric, just get us to the eight pole, man. That would be the most incredible thing. Just get us to the eight pole. Well, here we are in Italy, one of the top six teams in this entire bracket, everyone else eliminated. And who's our first game? Spain. Spain had just beat us up, like I said, you know, just, just demolished us 16 to nine. We throw a complete game, three nothing shutout against Spain. Louis Soho, who I used to watch as a, as, a, as a young man and loved the way he played, refused to shake our hands after the game. Not because we were Jewish, David, don't get upset, because he was a sore loser, because they looked past Israel. Game two, who do we have? We have the Netherlands, eighth in the, in the world. Their coach is like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? I mean, this big, strong guy, I come here to demolish you. Uh, okay, you know, uh, yeah, demolish me. I'll, I'll see you after the game. So, so John Muscat, who had basically had his arm put back together, used to play for the Cincinnati Reds, says, Coach, I want the baseball. I said, John, I, I, I don't know, man. You know, your arm's just, he goes, Coach, here's the deal. If this is the last time in my life that I throw a baseball, I want to give you everything I got. I'm going to leave it out on the field. I don't know how many bullets are left in my chamber, but whatever I have left, please use it against the Netherlands. John goes out and throws four and two thirds, gives up one run, and we beat the Netherlands eight to one. Eighth ranked team in the world. I mean, shocked. These people have no idea what to say, what to do. The media is attacking me after the game, asking me, you know, how are we doing this? And, and I'm, I'm very talkative now, but David, you know, as a Massachusetts Red Sox fan, I'm kind of like the Bill Belichick of baseball. <laughs> I don't really talk a whole lot after the game. I don't like to, you know, say too much to, to, to flame any fires. Who do we have the next day? We have Italy, in Italy, and it's a 2-2 game. Man, it, it, there's tension in the stands, and every pitch matters, and 2-2 two, two in the eighth. We have first and third with one out, and Mitch Glasser, uh, Chicago kid, uh, put safety squeezes I've ever seen in my life. The first baseman comes up, bobbles the ball. We score one. They call timeout. They bring in a kid named Pat Venditti. Anybody know who Pat Venditti is? And the reason I ask is he's special. 
Pat Venditti made it to the major leagues as one of the only ambidextrous pitchers in baseball. And I always said to myself, man, I'd love to see this in, in, in real life. I just didn't want to see it against us. They bring in Pat Venditti for Italy. And um, long story short, we put up another four runs against Pat. And we end up beating Italy in Italy 8-2. We're 3-0. and Tomorrow, we have the Czech Republic. And we're feeling good, man. I mean, in, in, in Germany and, and any of you guys that really know baseball know that if you ever think that way, you're doomed from the beginning. Because that night, the Czech Republic just had our number. Man, we'd score one, they'd score two. We'd score one, they'd score three. And we just couldn't get in a rhythm that night. I felt like they were stealing our signs uh, when they'd get a runner on second base. And it, it, it was a bad night. And we lose to the Czech Republic 7-4. to four. So now, here's the deal. We beat Spain, we beat the Netherlands, and we beat Italy. We're three and one. And the Czech Republic is, um, I think they were two and two. So we were the only team here that controlled our own destiny. And We're playing South Africa. We're on our way to the ballpark. And again, I'm not really a, that big a rah-rah guy. But about five minutes out of the stadium, I ask all the guys to turn the music down and take their headphones off. And I stand up and I just say to the bus, I go, boys, here's the deal. We're the only team in this whole damn tournament that controls our own destiny. If you just take care of business today, we leave this hotel as a baseball team and we return as Olympians. And the bus goes nuts. Guys are banging on the bus, on the windows. We show up to play South Africa. These poor guys never knew what hit them. We beat them 11 to one. And, and, and we become this team that was kind of known as like, you know, the Jamaican bobsled, Israel. Israel's the size of New Jersey. How, how are you competing with all? Well, not only did we compete, we ended up going 17 and four that summer within four countries in six weeks to be the first team to qualify for the 2020 Olympics, which has now been pushed back to uh, this summer, which will be in July. Um, what's real um, exciting for, for me as a coach, um, we've added a guy to the roster since then that you may have heard of, a guy named Ian Kinsler. Uh, Ian Kinsler uh, will be playing for, uh, for us this summer. And, uh, you know, here we are. I mean, thankful that they didn't cancel the Olympics. Um, everybody is, 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 you know, safe and healthy. Uh, we're waiting for uh, the final two teams to be announced. Obviously, we know who the four are. It's us in Japan, Mexico, and Korea. Uh, but there's another tournament, which is the America's Tournament. And the last one is supposed to be in Taiwan to dis decide the last two teams uh, that will compete in this, but you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a big deal. I mean, we're the first team sport, uh, to qualify for an Olympics since 1976. And, uh, right now we know that, you know, if you pay attention to this stuff at all, baseball and softball have already been taken out of the Olympics in 2024 and has been replaced with break dancing. The French decided to take baseball and softball out of the mix and they replaced it. So the next time baseball could be back would be in 2028, which is when it'll be back in Los Angeles. Uh, and, you know, most of my team will be retired and, and, and you know, way gone by then. So uh, to, to have gone through and done everything that 
uh, we did to be able to make this happen from that first meeting uh, with Peter on that napkin to getting to a point where we're going to be one of six teams in the world uh, competing for a medal. It would have just been a shame, uh, you know, to not get there, you know, after everything we did and, and, and continue to kind of put Israel uh, uh, on the map. So uh, here we are. And, and um, you know, before we open it up to questions, um, you know, with COVID right now, uh, the plans were we were going to uh, try and get together early, um, uh, meaning like February. Now we're looking at end April, possibly in Arizona. Uh, if that doesn't happen, we're definitely uh, going to be here, uh, here at, meaning in New York. We're going to train together for about three weeks a month before the Olympics uh, in New York. Um, we're going to be training in, in uh, Boulder Stadium, Palisades Park, uh, Palisades Provident. Uh, park, uh, which is a home of the Rockland Boulders. Uh, we're going to be coming up north, playing in a couple of teams in the Cape Cod League, going down as far as Maryland, and then getting on a plane to go to Tokyo and uh, and compete for a medal. So uh, that's my story. That's what I got for you. And I will be glad to answer anything that you have for me, Danny. Can I say something before we get to the questions? This was one of the best presentations I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> I mean, you, I'm just sitting here just transfixed by every word you're saying. But David, you know, what, what's terrible is I forgot Germany. And, and the one thing I forgot about Germany, and not to make this creepy at all for you guys, you guys are all in my peer group, right? And, and we're about the same age. So you guys, I'm going to say we think alike. Most of the guys on, that, that play for me, I mean, you know, it's their parents who told them about the Holocaust. It's their grandparents who told them about the Holocaust. When we walked into the stadium in Germany, the sponsor of the stadium was the Bonn, B-O-N-N, -N, because that was the town we were in, gas company. You know how creepy that was, man? I... I I can't even explain to you. Now, I didn't, I never said that to my players. I never talked about that with my players, but I will tell you. As I told you, I'm not a memorabilia guy. Uh, the only baseball I've, I kept throughout this entire journey is the, 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 the one that says Israel four in Germany too. And it's in my office at work. And, and, uh, like I said, man, that, that game meant more to me. And then after the game, I explained it to the guys and why it meant so much and how proud, uh, you know, all the Jewish people uh, would be just for us to have the opportunity to be here. So go on, David. Right. Danny's going to feed the questions. Danny? Yes, David. Feed the questions? So, Eric, um, for David Kravitz to say that to you about the presentation, after you told him that you're from New York <laughs> and that you're a Yankee, he hates the Yankees. <laughs> he would kill his family members. He said that the other night to me. So that's a really big I deal. So, it. I appreciate it. It's true, right, that's David? True. I don't like okay. the Yankees. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. <laughs> All right. So we have a lot of, uh, there were a lot of questions. Um, first question, uh, good, really good question. How do you feel the difference between coaching a college team and the, a national team like you did, the Israel team? Uh, what's the biggest difference? Um, yeah, it's a great question. I mean, college, um, the kids are still young. They're still impressionable. Uh, you're still teaching. Um, uh, coach, this level of baseball, you expect these guys to have um, a higher IQ higher baseball IQ so that they, they, they understand uh, what's wanted, what's needed. Um, they understand themselves better, their bodies better. Um, um, and just just more mature individuals, Danny. Okay. Um, thank you for that. So a uh, lot of questions about um, coaching a, a team Israel. So is there a fan base in Israel for the game? So that's a, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, something I've been struggling with for, for, for years. Um, 
the biggest fan base in Israel are the expats, the people that lived here and moved there, right? There's currently a thousand um, uh, youth baseball players in the entire country of Israel. My goal uh, personally um, is to um, double that every couple of years. So I've already committed myself to staying on and not only, you know, going to Israel a few times a year once all this COVID stuff is, is put to bed, but I'm going to also work with their coaches, teaching their coaches how to teach the game of baseball. Um, and I'm trying to get involved with some of the people there and in introducing baseball in their schools at a very young age. Because if you don't learn baseball or start to learn baseball until you're 12 or 13 years old, you're not going to get it. We need to get these kids at five, six, seven years old. Um, so that we can int start introducing them to it. Um, but so the answer is, and then the other thing too, is Israelis in general um, are not patient people. So they prefer basketball and soccer. It's quick and they go home and they have a coffee and then they go. So baseball, if you speak to a, a, a real Israeli, uh, they'll tell you it's kind of like uh, uh, learning the Talmud. <laughs> it's very slow <laughs> I'm going to an answer Rob Blitzer real quick because uh, Rob absolutely we're going to be playing a bunch of scrimmage games uh, uh, the end of June beginning of July um, in the New York area uh, at Boulder Stadium at the Jersey Jackals Yogi Berra Stadium uh, and a bunch of information will be out as uh, you know things get closer yes <laughs> Hey, what about you said you're coming up to the Cape to Cape yeah, when Cod? Are they, when are they going to do that? Again, that should be, again, if everything is normal, uh, we should be uh, up there probably the first or second week of July. All right. So, uh, yeah, so those of us in the proximity to Cape yeah. Cod, which is a lot of us, um, yeah. we'll, we'll have to uh, pursue that a little bit. So there's, there's a lot of questions here about actually playing in the qualifying um when you played in Europe, first of all, uh, good question. Did you have a jet lag issue? Because you were bopping around everywhere. Um, great, great question. So so everybody gets a little bit of jet lag. Um, we would get to the country um, that we were going to be playing in usually a day or two in advance to try and get over jet lag. Um, but I will tell you um, that adrenaline is the most wonderful thing there is because once you flip that switch um i don't think anybody you know is jet lag once it's time to compete you compete nobody thinks about who's tired or who's not tired or whatever uh everybody kind of got over that pretty quickly okay and there was another question relating to playing in europe which i, I thought was really an uh, important one did you feel did you ever experience any anti-semitism in Again, un 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 unbelievable question. Um, did we know? Uh, did we have different rules than everyone else? Absolutely. We were not allowed to wear anything that said Israel anywhere oh, wow. other than to and from the ballpark. Um, we had special Mossad type guys with us at all times in every country we were we were in. Um, did I feel any anti-Semitism? No, never. The, 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 the people in Germany were some of the most warm and wonderful people that were welcoming to us, uh, were very inquisitive and asked us how we felt about being there. Um, so there was nothing specific, but Jewish, your antennas are always up and we try to be smart. Like I said, we're never wearing anything um, that says, hey, look at me, I'm Jewish, ever. And on your team, were there any actual Israelis? On my team, to start out with, yes. <laughs> Today, I have um, four, and probably my best one, um, if there are any Baltimore Oriole fans here, uh, is going to be taken away from us because he's going to probably be in the starting rotation for the Orioles, a kid named Dean Kramer, 
who is uh, born in Israel, grew up in California, but he, he grew up in both, uh, um, um, his father's from California, his mother's from Israel. So he, he is a dual citizen, but wow. considered the first Israeli, yes. That's, that's, that's awesome. And speaking of Maryland, when he, I have a question here, when are you going to be in Maryland? So again, I, you know, as, as everything kind of transpires, we can be in touch, but it, it would probably be the middle of July. Because I think from Maryland, uh, we're going to leave from Maryland to head to the airport and then go right to Tokyo from there. So Tokyo. So there's a couple of questions. So at this point, the plan is still to have Olympics, live Olympics in Tokyo So um, this summer, correct or no? this moment it's definitely happening it's definitely happening this summer uh now that there's a vaccination it's like a hundred percent happening this summer uh the only thing that's up in the air right now is spectators no spectator right, bubble just, you know like i was just going to ask so follow, um the scary um you know thing for us really is you know when you're staying in an olympic village I just, I, listen, I had COVID. I was one of the first people to have it. I had it in March. I had it pretty bad for about 11 days. Uh, so I'm not scared of it now, but to live with 10,000 people, you know, in the same proximity, I, I kind of want to know what's going on. So we're waiting to hear all those things. And have you ever been to Japan? And, and watched the baseball in Japan? I have Cause... not. I've been all over. Uh, how about this? How about Japan's manager and his whole coaching staff was in Italy scouting us? <laughs> wow. Because <laughs> uh, there's a question. That was one of the questions. Um, uh, so, okay. Well, those are some really, I have a few more good, I thought some really good questions. How much time do you put into recruiting American minor leaguers? Well, I mean, right now, none. Um, we, you know, when this was happening in, you know, 2017, 2018, I mean, you know, we, we, we spent a good amount of time doing it, um, you know, getting in the coaches and, uh, and see, it's, it's, it's everybody on the board of Israel baseball. It's Peter Kurz, who's my general manager. Um, so there's a lot of people that are involved in this, Danny. Okay, this is a really good, I, I find too, a couple of really good questions. Uh, Shabbat, so did you guys, what happened when, when a game is on Friday night or Saturday and you're the Israeli baseball team representing the Jewish people? So, um, of um, religious Jew, um, one of the most wonderful things that we did as a team, and when I tell you awesome, is the entire team and staff had Shabbat dinner in every country we were in, uh, no matter where we were. So if we were in Lithuania, I remember uh, Jordy Alter, who's the president of Israel Baseball, found a Hadassah 100 miles away in a, like, in, in, in the capital of, of uh, Lithuania to deliver us kosher food so that we ate as a team. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, guys that, 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 that are, 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 are Shomer Shabbos who follow uh, the Sabbath, but I will tell you, we would not play um, we would just wouldn't play on on Shabbat. Period. Uh, we've told we made it very clear. Oh, good. Okay, that's. I think that's what the question was. That we've you made know. it very clear. Um, you know that, that that you know you just can't schedule it. If you schedule it, it's got to be on a Friday morning. And so related to that type of question, uh, there's a question here which I also think is important, which is, 
who did the Israeli government actually sponsor? Like you were representing Midinat Israel, this the country, the state of Israel. Were they was the government a sponsor of the team? Who paid the expenses? You know, great question. And we are constantly in search of funding because no, they paid for nothing. Um, Peter Kurz, the GM, goes out and tries to fundraise all over the world for Israel baseball. He is continuously, um, you know, working with you know, private and public um, donors. Um, basically what happened was Israel, uh, the IOC, the Israeli uh, Olympic Committee said basically, well, you know, get there and then it will help you. Well, you know what, we got here and they're partially funding us. So here we are, you know, uh, seven months prior to Tokyo and and we still have about a seven or eight hundred thousand dollar deficit and we're no longer a B pool and we were an Olympic team and we we're still about eight hundred thousand dollars in the hole so we are constantly um, you know trying to uh, fundraise and do anything that we can to fundraise um, so yeah if you know anybody I mean Israel Association of Baseball um, you, you know we're a bunch of different things, coaching through the uh, uh, the practice period. I mean, we're 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 yeah. It, it, it's 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 frustrating to say the least, Danny. Because two years ago, I could understand it when we were just a, a B pool team, uh, but here we are now, one of six teams in the Olympics, and we're still under underfunded. Okay, well that's good. Well, he, you might not know this, and no one here on the call knows this, and I don't even think David Kravitz knows this, but he's actually a billionaire. So talk to David afterwards and, yeah. and <laughs> yeah, right. in, out of Worcester, Worcester's yeah. just the cover. Uh -huh. Sure, sure. Good luck. So I do have a couple of specific questions. I do not know the following, the answer to the following question. Do you know the sports rabbi, Josh Halleckman? I don't know him personally. I know who he is. Okay. That was the question. Okay. Okay. The other specific comment or question or comment is, can you comment on playing with Nate Fish? Can I comment on it? Man, I, it, it's not a comment. It's a whole story. Nate Fish became like a brother to me. So Nate Fish was the guy who uh, asked me to be his assistant coach in 2013. We were roommates together in 2007 in Israel. We both played in the Israel Baseball League. We played against each other, but we loved each other so much that we wanted a room together, even being opposing players on opposing teams. He is the one to really get me involved with Israel baseball. Nate disappeared for a couple of years um, um, to go work for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He recently moved and, and it was working for the Dodgers in Uganda um, and, and fell in love, is getting married, moved back to the States. And as payback to show him how much I loved him, Nate Fish will be joining me in the Olympics as my assistant coach. That's great. And if Mitch Dax wasn't on the phone, he would have really appreciated your comment. We have an avid Dodgers fan here. Okay. But he's, he's, we see him chatting on the phone. So um, so couple, just a couple of more questions. Uh, I'm going to leave the one specific one to the end. Okay. Um, the team that you have had and have are most of the players Jewish or all of them Jewish they are um, most of them are Jewish uh, there's they are all Israeli I would say most of them are I'm, I'm thinking right now most of them are Jewish most of them are Jewish there may be a couple that you know just not religious you know they, and they just don't practice anything Okay. But they have Jewish. They just have Jewish heritage, and they were able to make uh, Aliyah and become citizens. Great, great. All right. Well, this was terrific. So I, I do have a, a really good question. Someone asked, and I, I would be interested. So how can we get Israel baseball shirts? How can we get them? We'd love to get them. So that's great. So so um, I'll I'll get a link for David, um, and and if you're still recording, this is going to get me in trouble, but. 
I am recording. Yeah, I'm recording. We, 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 we are so underfunded that I have to pay for all my stuff myself. Oh, God. Okay? As the head coach, um, which is crazy, man. I will, David, just email me tomorrow. Okay, well. And I will, I will shoot you a link. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 there's a company down in Florida, and there's a bunch of stuff on there. There's hats, there's T-shirts. Oh, that'd be um, great. Yeah. As we as we get yeah. closer, um, there was a gentleman before I saw wearing one of the old uh, World Baseball Classic hats. The uh, new era uh, is making our hats. They're awesome hats, and those will be on sale uh, as we get closer to the Olympics. That's going to be directly through New Era, but they're going to be like you know big league hats, pro hats. That is wonderful. So if you can send that to David, we'll get that. We'll get that rolled out to uh, to the bigger group. I think that would be just terrific. So Eric, thank you. That was a really wonderful presentation. Um, one thing that uh, I always do, and we always do, is uh, you'll be a recipient of the Vine from our FJMC Wine on the Vine program. So Danny, Danny, it's yeah. Tom. I want to up time. this. I'm going to up this. He's up. He's going to up it oh, now. There you go, Eric. If you can get when you the team is formed in Arizona, <laughs> and you can get David where you'll be, we will send you a case of high quality Israeli boutique wine oh, my that God. you can use for oh, wow, Shabbos dinners. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. Thank and, you, Tom. And Tom's I, cheap, I, so that was really good. That you got a, <laughs> he must have really liked this. Good guy, no, so it's no, okay. no. I, it's four bottles in a, in a brown paper bag. These are baseball players. <laughs> now, this we we have this partnership with a number of the leading wineries in Israel, and I somebody we have a donor who would love to send send something to the team, and that we'd love to be able to do that to support you guys. And it's awesome, uh, even and better. Just we have a distributor in the United States, so just let us know where you are, and okay. also let us know because I think we'd all like to show support and wear jerseys and hats and whatever, and give them to our kids and whatnot. Awesome. Awesome. This was unbelievable. Thank you very much. And no, I, I'm the one who asked the Nate Fish question. I know his parents. I, I'm in Shaker Heights. We went ah. to high school. I, I saw him in high school. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Jerry and Marsha. Yep. Awesome. There you go. So, hey, we all uh, have connections. So, can I just say a couple, a couple things? His, actually, time? his father used to work for a hat company. Okay. All right. So, um, I just want to thank, first, well, first, first of all, Eric, because it was, as I said, we're a good one. I didn't realize how good it was going to be until you actually started to speak. It was incredible. I have to say it again. It was incredible. Um, I, and I was impressed. Okay. I'm really impressed. And I got to thank my partner, Danny, because Danny and I, you know, we're buddies and he helps me and I help him. We work together. We're a real good team. I want to thank Elliot Feldman and Tom Sudo because they helped a lot and they really help us put everything together. It's just, it's a big team effort. So it, it, everything works together. I want to thank everybody for joining us this evening because obviously our, and our speaker, Eric Holtz was phenomenal. I just want to reiterate the fact that uh, we, we, in honor of your presentation, we are FGMC is going to appoint Vine in Israel, very apropos uh, of, your, of our partnership with Wine on the Vine, an exciting new program from the Israel Innovation Fund, a nonprofit foundation that supports Israeli wine industry, arts, and entertainment, and the FJMC. How apropos is that? Okay. Our next event of the Sports Affinity will be on January 20th. Our program will be Alan Friedman, director of the Jewish Sports Heritage Association. If you're interested in presenting or plan to help to present, please contact me. Uh, it's dbkravitz at msn.com. I uh, love to talk to you uh, or email me. And I want to thank you and I look forward to seeing you at our next program. And if you enjoyed our program this evening, please make a contribution to FJMC by going to fjmc.org, donate, and the link is in the chat. So again, I want to thank you very much. This was phenomenal. Shalom. And I can't say enough. I want to thank everybody who's here tonight. Thank great. you, guys. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Great job. Have a good night, everyone. Okay. We've done skis. Good. I'm going to end. I'm going okay, to end it. All right. Um, Here we go. We're ending. Okay. All right. You can, you can call me. All right. I'll call you. Okay.